Hello everyone and welcome back to the Airfix YouTube channel. We've got another starter set to build and paint in this video. It's the 143rd scale McLaren 765 LT and this may well be the easiest to build starter set that Airfix have created yet. Typically because it's a starter set you not only get the model but you also get the poly cement, the paintbrush and the acrylic paints to paint the kit. On the back of the box you'll find the usual full colour diagrams which are actual size and you've got the colour callouts for the supplied paints which are detailed in the small white boxes. In the small red boxes you'll find the callouts for the supplied transfer sheet to help you with placement. Inside the box you'll find a bag containing two frames of injection moulded plastic and a single piece body frame. In a separate bag inside this you'll find a clear part which handles all of the windows and the windscreen for the car. In the smaller bag you'll find the four Humbrol acrylic paints to paint the model and a tube of poly cement to glue the kit together. And there's a number two sized Humbrol Airfix paintbrush supplied with the model as well. The supplied transfer sheet covers all of the badges for the model as well as a small detail for the centre console screen. And there is of course the instruction manual which details the full construction process and should be read in full before you go ahead with your project just to make sure that you don't build this out of sequence and there aren't any parts that you can't get access to later. There's also a before you start guide included which details the common tools and techniques used to build models. Of particular interest is step one which is to wash all of the parts with soapy water. We'll be carrying out this step before we start our build. The basic toolkit that we'll be using to build the kit comprises of a set of cutters to remove parts from the frame, a modelling knife to trim away any excess plastic left behind, a modelling file from the Humbrol tool set to sand the plastic smooth after removal, and a set of tweezers to help when applying the transfers. This is a very basic toolkit well within the reach of even the most novice modellers. If you're new to building models you'll find that the kit's parts come supplied on these injection moulded frames and there's a small tab next to each part with a letter and a number. This part number is referenced in the small circular callouts in the instructions and is used to guide you in selecting the right parts when constructing the kit. We can now start the build by removing our first part from the frame with the cutters and we're cutting slightly away from the detailed surface of the model to avoid causing any damage. Any plastic that's left behind can then be trimmed away using the modelling knife as close to the surface as possible before we switch to the modelling file to sand away any remaining evidence of that frame connection point. This leaves us with a nice flush surface and ensures that none of that excess plastic interferes with the fit of the parts. Once we've got our first two parts cleaned up, we can then test the fit of these in a process commonly referred to as dry fitting, where we simply put them together without any glue. Now that we're ready to start gluing, we're going to cut a small piece of the kit box away to serve as a pallet, and we're going to cut the corner from the upper portion of the box to serve as an applicator. We can then apply the poly cement onto the pallet portion of this little arrangement, and then use the applicator to transfer the glue to the surface of the model. By applying the glue in this fashion, we're able to maintain better control and prevent getting any excess glue out onto the surface of the kit where it can cause unsightly marks and fingerprints. With the poly cement applied as per the yellow areas on the instruction manual, we simply press the two components together and hold them firmly while the poly cement melts the plastic forming a permanent bond. After a few seconds this will hold under its own weight and then after a couple of minutes it will be set completely. We can now go ahead and start painting the kit and we'll be starting with the matte black number 33. We'll give this a good stir first to undo any separation that may have occurred while the kit was in storage and then we'll transfer some of this paint to the palette. We can then mix in about 30% ordinary tap water. By diluting the paint in this fashion we'll prolong the drying time and this will give it more chance to self level on the surface of the model. Because we're painting with a water based acrylic directly onto bare plastic, there may be some areas where the surface tension of the paint prevents it from sticking properly. In these areas we'll use short fast strokes of the brush to overcome the surface tension and just try to get our initial layer of paint down all over the model as smoothly as possible. Thinning the paint with water does reduce its opacity somewhat 
so our initial coat will look streaky and not have good coverage. So we'll allow it to dry fully and then go ahead and apply a second layer. This is building up a good strong base coat for the next step which is to use the number 21 gloss black. We'll prepare this in the same fashion with a good stir and then add 30% tap water and then we'll paint the areas which are called out with number 21 in the instructions. This is mainly the visible areas such as the air intakes and the front and rear valance. We'll paint the brake discs while they're still attached to the frame as this helps with handling and also to keep the parts organised. After a couple of coats of matte black on the brake discs we can then switch to the gloss red paint supplied with the kit and just pick out the brake calipers. Because the plastic is orange the red covers easily so this step only takes a couple of minutes. We can then snip the brake discs from the frame when we're ready to attach them to the model. After snipping away with the cutters the modelling file will reduce any excess plastic left behind and then we just need to use the paintbrush to touch in a little bit of matte black to cover up that bare plastic. After dropping the axle into position without any glue we'll add some poly cement where shown in the instructions and then push the brake disc into position holding it for a few seconds for the glue to do its work and then repeat that on the other side before moving on to painting the interior. We're going to do the same thing that we did on the lower part of the car and start with a couple of coats of matte black which has been diluted with 30% tap water. This is to build up a strong black base coat for the gloss black which comes later on. We've left the interior components attached to the frame for ease of handling and we'll go ahead and apply two coats of matte black allowing the paint to dry fully between coats and that will give us a nice strong black base coat for us to then start applying gloss black over the top. The gloss black has been prepared in the same fashion with a good stir and then 30% tap water and we'll apply two or three coats of this over the matte black just to build up a good shine. While that's drying we'll go ahead and remove some of the matte black paint from the lower portion of the car just to allow the poly cement to get through to bare plastic to provide a good join. We can then add some poly cement to the lower portion of the interior tub and then once we've applied our glue we can press this into position and hold it for a few seconds to let the glue take hold. The seats are snipped from the frame cleaned up with the foil and any exposed plastic touched up just like we did on the brake discs before being glued into place with a bit of poly cement. The door sections are also treated the same being given a quick clean up before being glued into place on both sides. With the interior assembly well underway we then run into the first of our required markings. This small transfer is required on the centre console of the dashboard. To apply the markings we first need to cut the required one from the backing sheet using the modelling knife and then we can use tweezers to immerse this in ordinary tap water for just a few seconds and then we'll set it aside to soak for a couple of minutes. When it's ready to apply the water will have softened the adhesive on the backing paper and the transfer will slide around under gentle pressure from the paintbrush. We can then guide this into an approximate position on the surface of the model and then use the back of the modelling knife to adjust the final positioning. When everything's right where we need it we can soak away any excess water using a small piece of tissue and the marking is applied. After completing the dashboard by adding the steering wheel we can then glue the whole dashboard assembly into position completing the interior. Moving on to the exterior of the model there are some small inserts for the front wheel arches which we removed from the frame, cleaned up and glued into position using the techniques that we've already showed so far. When it comes to adding the doors these are the most visible glue joins on the whole kit so this time we took great care to concentrate the poly cement towards the inside face of the model so that when the two parts are squeezed together any excess glue won't bubble out onto the detailed surface. This way we were able to get a nice clean join and complete the body shell. The rear spoiler had some excess plastic which needed to be snipped away and cleaned up with the foil but both the spoiler and the rear bumper were left attached to the frame. We then gave the orange paint supplied with the kit a good stir, diluted it 30% with tap water and then gave the whole body shell, the rear bumper and the rear spoiler two nice even coats of gloss orange allowing each layer to dry fully in between. Once the orange was dry it was time for the tricky part of the painting process which was to edge in all of the black areas with the matte black from the kit. There's no easy way to do this 
and the best thing to try and do is get the brush to locate itself in the recess details on the surface of the model and this will help guide the bristles around the details. It's best to try and avoid getting any of the black paint onto the orange paint as orange doesn't cover particularly well and it will take several layers to cover up any mistakes. Once we'd got into a bit of a rhythm with the black paint we went ahead and did the same on the black areas on the rear bumper. We had to do this a couple of times to build up solid coverage and this was going to be the base coat for our gloss black which we'd then have to apply over the top. With the last of the matte black paint in the palette we quickly painted in the interior of the roof to cover up all of the orange plastic and then we switched over to number 21 gloss black yet again diluted with 30% tap water and started to apply this over the top of the matte black base coat. We need to add two coats of the gloss black to build up a good shine but because we've got that base coat down adhesion isn't a problem and we can use it as a good guide to follow so it wasn't as tricky as it was to paint the black areas in the first time around. We also painted in the top half of the mirrors with gloss black and then moved on to the windows. Any excess plastic was trimmed away first with the cutters and then we used the modelling file to clean up the locating tabs to make sure nothing interfered with the fit. We then put some tissue down on the bench to protect the paint on the roof and we added poly cement to the locating points where the tabs on the clear part would fit into place. Once the poly cement was added we carefully manoeuvred the glass section into position and then pushed down firmly until we hear the click of the windows locating into the side of the bodywork. Once the glue is fully cured we just need to paint in the frames around the outside of the windows and for this we'll be using a base coat of matte black yet again and then two layers of gloss black over the top. Using the raised details moulded into each window as a guide for the brush we'll carefully block these areas in but if we do make any mistakes we have the advantage of being able to carefully scratch the paint away from the clear parts with a cocktail stick. After snipping the bumper free from the frame and then touching in the bare plastic where the connection point was, we can add poly cement to the body shell and glue the rear bumper into position. Using the yellow coloured areas in the instructions as a location guide for the poly cement, we can then prepare the lower half of the model to receive the body shell. Once all of the glue is added, we carefully position the body shell over the lower half and push downwards until the body shell clicks into place and then we hold it firmly to let the glue do its work. The applicator can then get a trim down to make it smaller so that we can add poly cement into the smaller recesses in the body shell to receive the rear spoiler. Once the rear spoiler is glued into position, we'll do the same thing up front and we'll glue the wing mirrors into place. We've cut the applicator down so that we can carefully position the glue inside the recesses without getting any glue on our carefully painted model. Once the mirrors are in position that's the entire construction completed on the upper portion of the model and it's time to move on to the wheels and tyres. Clean up process is exactly the same as we showed earlier in the video with each of the components being snipped away and then cleaned up. Once the cleanup is complete, some poly cement can be added around the inside face of the wheel and then the tyre can be pressed into position and held for a few seconds while the glue takes hold. Once these have been glued together, we mounted our wheels on some cocktail sticks to make it easier to handle them while we're painting. The whole wheel and tyre assembly was given a good coat of matte black to start off with and then a second coat to solidify the colour. And once the matte black is completely dry we can give the wheels two coats of gloss black on both the front face and around the inside of the rim to make them nice and shiny. Once the paint has been allowed to dry fully we can add a touch of poly cement to the end of the axles and then press the wheels into position holding them for a few seconds and making sure that they're aligned correctly. Once all four wheels have been added that's the end of the construction phase and we can move on to the final step which is to add the rest of the transfers. We'll be adding the transfers in exactly the same way as we used for the transfer on the centre console, cutting each marking free from the sheet with the modelling knife first and then using the tweezers to dip this in ordinary tap water, after which we'll set it aside to soak for about a minute. Once the transfer is ready to use, it will slide around on the backing paper using the paintbrush. 
The marking can then be slid onto the surface of the model in the approximate location it's required and final positioning carried out using the back of the modelling knife. Once it's in place, a small piece of tissue takes away the excess moisture and the marking is complete. There are a few markings to add on this model so we're not going to show each one in the video but the process is exactly the same and once we've finished adding them all and they've all been allowed to dry that completes the build of the McLaren 765LT starter set from Airfix and we can go ahead and pop this one on the shelf. The idea of building a complex and aerodynamic supercar like the McLaren 765LT may seem like a daunting prospect to somebody who's just getting started in the hobby. By presenting this vehicle in the starter set format with its reduced parts count and its improved build sequence, Airfix hoped to bring this kind of a replica well within the reach of even the most novice of modellers. And as we've shown in these videos, we only use the most basic of tools and the contents of the kit box to create the replica that you see here. If you're an experienced modeler, this kind of a kit can be put together in less than a day and forms a nice break from more complex projects. And if you're a beginner, these are the perfect way to gain some experience and to get some models on your shelf. So thank you very much for joining us for some modeling today. And as always, we'll see you again next time. Thank you.